the Micro Brute series of synthesizers uh, from Arturias, I have nothing but praise for this product. Uh, it was my first true analog uh, synthesizer, and I always bring it with me when I'm traveling. The uh, the main reason I got it was because it was it was for traveling, and I also wanted to mess around with um, some hardware synthesizers, uh, which I didn't have that much experience with at the time that I purchased this. The the compactness kind of fools you into thinking it's kind of a weak sound, but this under the hood, there's a very powerful engine uh, that drives some really wonderful sonic textures. Um, and I guess we can jump right in and go to an overview. First, we have a sequencer, uh, which gives you eight patterns. Um, you can record on the fly and then hit, go and hit play. Um, change the rate at the playback. Uh, I believe it gives you 16 notes, if I remember correctly. And you can um, use this to tap the tempo when it's playing, or um, you can use it to space out your notes. So if you wanted a 4x4, four four, you know, you'd hit 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, we'll get into that later. The next is the envelope, which um, you know allows you to change the timbre of the uh, waveforms, uh, of which I definitely recommend if you don't know what an envelope, the ADSR is, um, look that up on Google. It's going to be a wealth of information and really help you out to choose what you want to uh, purchase if you're in the market for a synthesizer. Um, in the microbrute, we have the three standard waveforms. Well, usually there's four, but um, here they just went with the triangle, uh, the square, and the saw. And then we have kind of like a 0.5 waveform, uh, which we'll definitely get into later, but this is one of the reasons that I purchased this uh, product and perhaps my favorite thing about this. It's important to note that uh, these controls on top uh, are partnered with, with the control on the bottom. So the metallic sound will affect the triangle, pulse width will affect the uh, square wave. For the saw wave, it's called the ultra saw. And that's kind of where I was talking about the the specialness of uh, how close you can get it to sound like an actual super saw. It's basically mixing these three together, and you get some really really interesting effects. Um, then we get we can go into the filter, uh, which has your cutoff, which is just a standard low pass, band pass, high pass. Uh, then you have uh, their famous resonant filter along with their super famous brute force or brute force factor. Um, that has its own very specific distortion from Arturia that I know people that have purchased this just to, so that they can use this on their input signal and then you know add their own style to uh, to their sound <clears throat> then uh, along with the uh, the filters we have our VC connectors which if you don't know what this is it, it's just basically allows you to harness the uh, power of electricity to uh, manipulate um, the waveforms and um, the filters and kind of change, automate a lot. In my opinion, I use it for mostly automation. They can really change the sound, make it sound completely different, uh, and do some really crazy stuff. And they give you two, but uh, you know, if you're um, if you're uh, resourceful, you can kind of get get a lot more out of this than just what it seems. Uh, but we'll definitely get back to that as that is slightly more advanced for for, for right now. Um, we can go back after the envelope. We have uh, the way to basically uh, change the amount the envelope affects. Um, it's appropriately called an envelope amount. And then here, this allows us to change how, uh, when we hit a key, whether we want the envelope to affect how that elect uh, electrical signal is is coming out. Um, through the oscillator, or we can just change it to a gate, which basically just makes it uh, binary, it's 0, 1. When I hit a button, it turns on. When I let it go, it turns off. Next, we have the LFO, which is a low-frequency oscillator, and it essentially is a oscillator. It's, it's very similar to one of these guys. As you can see, it also has the three waveforms. Uh, the difference is that it's so slow, we, it's not really perceptible to our ears, but allows us to manipulate the other controls uh, a lot easier. And again, for me, it really matters for automation. Um, 
next we have uh, our the this which actually controls the glide function which uh, if you uh, know music theory it would be um, staccato on this side and then if you turned it all the way um, it would be legato on that side. I, I think I have that correct but um, I'm sure if I don't people will correct me. Um, <clears throat> next we can change how what the mod wheel manipulates uh, which is this switch right here and then your standard pitch on any electronic and then the small frame uh, keyboard. So the first thing we want to do when we start playing uh, is make sure that you have your volume down. This is always the most important thing. Uh, before you plug it in, make sure that the volume is down. Make sure that the volume is down on your input, on your mixer or DAW controller, whatever it is that you're plugging this into, make sure they're both down all the way to zero. Then plug it in, turn it on, um, and then next step is we're going to want to very carefully bring this up. We just want a little bit so we can see if we have a uh, signal. So right now we can see that there is voltage coming through there. Every time I hit it, the light comes on. And I don't know if you can hear this. I am recording it straight through. so. If it's loud enough, you should hear like a little ticking, and that's just the voltage uh, hitting the wall because we have no no oscillators turned on. So let's start with our uh, triangle. I'm gonna hit it as we increase it. Oh, you know, I just realized we have our cutoff as low pass, which means that right now this is not gonna let any audio out. So let's bring this all the way up. So that we can now listen to the whole any sounds that come out this is not going to stop before what was happening is this was letting audio come out but this was being stopped by the cutoff so now that we have this we might be able to hear some yep and we do so let's increase done um, let's go ahead and notice that I have it on as gate so it was back to that uh, binary it's on or it's off that's it so what we want to do is we want to have a little more delicate control over the signal so let's turn on our envelope and the way we do that is to push that up and now if we hit it we're not going to hear anything we can still see that that voltage is coming up but look at our envelope amount. It's at zero or negative. I'm not sure how much that is. But if we increase it, we're still going to hear zero because our attack, decay, sustain, and release are all the way down. What we need at the very least is for our release, or our sustain, I mean. gives us a whole bunch of control. We can start making it sound a little more paddish. Have it come up and then slowly go away. Or uh, we can add it some delay. Almost like softly blowing into a wind instrument. So I like to keep it that way. Now that we have some sound coming out, let's go ahead and, um, I don't know, let's do... We can actually even record that, but we'll do that later. Right now, let's just go through um, the waveform so we get some basic idea. You always want to increase the volume blast your ears. Alright, that's the square one. And then we can 
also kind of do, it's not going to be a super soft. special saw <laughs> and if uh, if you're wondering yes you can combine these so let's say right now we have just the uh, sawtooth we can add square and we can add the triangle is the low end and this is the high end uh, at this moment it's completely open so it's letting all of this pass and as this goes this way this will start closing so you can hear fewer and fewer so at the middle it, we're only hearing half of what the signal is outputting and as we go down by a quarter right we're gonna be here we probably need a little more volume We can actually uh, observe more of the low end if we bring out a square. I brought this down because I'm not sure exactly how that's going to sound. But remember, it's the filter's cutoff is right over here. Let's go into a little bit more advanced stuff just so we can play around before this video is over. Um, since I have this plugged in, let's mess with our uh, filter. So we have right now the cutoff, the LFO, uh, which is this guy, is connected to the filter, uh, which is this guy. And what we have it set right now is probably not perceptible the rate and the amount are too small um, but if we were to uh, let's keep it as a sawtooth so we have that and let's increase it this basically affects how big the peaks of these um, ouch like that <laughs> the the peaks of these um sawtooth are so um, you know how high the top is from the bottom the peaks and the troughs and the rate is how the frequency how often we get those uh, those waveforms so if we increase that sound if we increase the frequency it starts to sound a little bit If I were to unplug this, and just manually move it back and forth, it sounds similar. I can't do it because it's not the same. The, you know, electricity is a lot more perfect than a fallible human like myself, but basically it tries to do that. And we can increase the rate to superhuman levels. smoothest one. So this 
sounds more like uh, like hitting a hollow metal tube of some sort, which is definitely cool. So we have that effect. not be a bad time to show you uh, the glide I want to get the maximum effect and how it glides between them the staccato and the legato and it sounds like a police officer is starting doesn't it I wonder what they have in their uh, electronics so, ooh, that's a little bit too loud. So I'm wearing headphones, so if, if I blast out your ears, I'm blasting out my own ears. I apologize. Um, so we have that set up. So right now we only have the filter being controlled by the LFO. <clears throat> but we can also control the pitch. So as that uh, sawtooth hits the the filter in that way now it's going to hit the pitch of this waveform of uh, this guy the square wave we change the pulse width um, that's, that's pwm here That's a very different sound, isn't it? So let me show you what that sounds like. So basically what the pulse width does is between the t both of these peaks, so your square wave is like that, and these peaks uh, can be changed in size. So the bigger the pulse width, the larger it is. The smaller the pulse width, the smaller it is. It basically just changes the, the, the space in between them. So if we put that back. something else let's do uh, let's go over the ultra saw pretty good for kind of just an overview of the micro boot. Um, like I said, this is just scratching the surface. There's a lot more that we can do. Oh, we haven't gone into the resonance, the brute force, automating anything more than just one thing. Um, and I guess we can real quick. Uh, what I have here is uh, it's basically just a, a tone uh, to syncopate. If I wanted, if I had the beat going, kind of basically to test out sounds and noises. Basically, just to, to mess around and, and get an idea of a song I wanted to do. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, and let me know if. Um, you, there's any other questions.